while they are away from home, citing a lack of awareness from electricity consumption. That was what was trending, but he has come around to say that's not how he said it, and that was, it was misrepresented and misinterpreted. However, he's here with us on the show, Minister of Power, Adebayo Adelabo. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very Good much. Good to have you. I'm happy to be here too. You know, we've been doing quite to a bit of media rounds and we welcome you to, welcome you to the Council of Women, mm -hmm. the Council of Nigerian Women. I'm, I'm, I'm honored. We love, we love to have you to I'm because there are a lot of here. issues concerning power. Yes. And we know you've been interviewed very recently amongst mm -hmm. the, even yesterday night. And we watched the interview and we understand um, a few of the things you've said. And mm -hmm. concerning the refrigerator issue, you said it yesterday mm -hmm. that um, that was not how it was, what you were just saying, yeah. you were saying jokingly. And you, and you, you offered an apology, yes. which we accept. Your apology mm -hmm. didn't mean it that way. We understand. <laughs> but one of the things um, I'd like to start with, I don't know if the ladies allow me to start with, is that I got from your interview was that um, you, Mr. President, and all the stakeholders realized that you needed to inject liquidity into the power sector. Yes. And you said, hmm, where can I find the money? If I ask Nigerians to pay this money, they will scream. So let us find all those Banana Island, 15% of the consumers, those ones that they have small change. Let us force, let us quadruple or triple their tariff and get them to bear the brunt of this liquidity we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Now, the question is, was that a fair thing to do? Or is it even a legal thing to do to segment 15% of your consumers to have them pay that 200, 225 uh, tariff, Naira, Naira tariff? Uh, is that fair? Uh, was, that, was that a fair decision? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Once again, I say good morning to you ladies. Good morning. And I want to um, appreciate you for the good job that you've been doing. It's all in the line of uh, national service. Yes. And we appreciate you. Just keep it up. Uh, to start with, let me also make reference to your opening uh, statement with regard to what transpired in the last press briefing that we had, which I confirmed last night that I was actually quoted out of contest. Mm -hmm. That was actually a genuine innocent advice to my fellow Nigerians mm. that we should start cult cultivating the culture of uh, consumption management. And that, that advice was not even directed at everybody. But I'm a Nigerian. And I know that a lot of people still are faced with epileptic power supply. I would not say, oh, you don't have up to 10 hours of supply. Switch off your freezer. I would not say that. Switch off your I will not say that. We are saying for those that we are targeting now, the band A, in our transformation journey, once you start having stable electricity, the fact that we increase the tariff by over 200% does not automatically translate into 200% increase in your bill if you can manage it properly when you start having more than 20 hours of supply. That was my innocent advice. And I even passed it across jokingly in a very comical manner. I never knew it was going to be blown up. I know Nigerians are touchy. Nigerians are angry based on what they have suffered in the past in terms of energy poverty. So, like I said, uh, it's like a case of the landlord and the tenant. Yeah. When there's a disagreement, whether it's the tenant that is at fault, you must be the one to apologize. Okay. If it's the landlord, you must apologize. I say, okay, no problem. Just bear with us. But the good thing out of this is that uh, the thing has uh, provoked a national discourse with regard to the state of our electricity. It has created a national awareness. And the message was also not lost in all this. People are now aware that consumer, consumption management is very key to reducing our energy costs. So I'm happy okay. for that. Now, co question. coming back to... Uh, the Band differential A. pricing <laughs> and the segmental mm. pricing of electricity. Let me tell you, electricity is a product. At the same time, it's a social service. And uh, if you have any industry, any sector, that operation is not allowed to follow the normal or natural commercial flow of commercial pricing of such a product the industry is going to get terminated in a short while mm. because investors they need to recover their costs and if possible make a markup on their investments but because of the criticality of the power sector for energy to everything we do 
government is ready to ensure that everybody has access to energy. So you cannot treat it like the normal commercial product. Okay. So the first intention was, oh, can we remove the tariff completely? We said, no, we cannot. Based on the fact that Nigerians are currently passing through a lot of hardships, yeah. based on certain recent decisions of government that are tough, but they are necessary. We have seen the harmonization of exchange rates that got the exchange rate escalated. We have seen the complete removal of the first subsidy. We have seen the inflation rate. We have seen so many things that have led to increase in cost of goods and services. And Nigerians are really suffering. Mr. President said, no, this is not the right time to remove subsidy completely. At the same time, the government that is bearing the subsidy, they are not able to source enough cash to back up this subsidy, which is why we have seen or witnessed the accumulated debt in the sector that we are owing the power sector operators, the generating companies, the gas supply companies, and all that. And it shows that there is paucity of fund and lots and lots of other critical sectors competing for the same fund from government pockets. Okay. The subsidy requirement for 2024, for example, was to be about 2.9 trillion, almost 3 trillion naira. Our power. budget, yes, on power. Yes, our budget is 28 trillion. That is 10%. We are saying, no, let us be realistic. Let's be a bit reasonable and considerate with government. Government can never afford to fund a 3 trillion. Over 10% of our budget, when other sectors are there, yeah. we have housing, we have works, we have health. defense, health, education, and all that. We must, we are not saying, okay, let's look for a middle ground position. Let's look for the high end electricity consumers that we believe that even when they don't have regular power supply, they can easily afford generators, petrol, or diesel to run. And we're saying, okay, if they could do this, why not let us ensure that this set of customers or consumers with very good infrastructure that is adequate enough to sustain stable electricity, let's start from them. Let's increase the tariff. We did not just quadruple or triple or double. It was not a random figure. We looked at what is the cost of producing electricity. Let them bear the full cost. Because this set of people are actually the ones that are consuming the larger portion of really? this subsidy, yes. Mm, you have 15 the data. Yeah, we do. We have the data. 15% of customers that we talk about, about 1.5 million out of uh, over 12 million electricity consumers, they, their consumption is about 40% of market consumption, which means that the remaining 85%, they are enjoying just 60% of the subsidy. We're saying no. At the end of the day, they are also better off by increasing the subsidy. You got the subsidy, the, 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 the tariff that we have now with the removal of subsidy for band A, is still way cheaper than the cost of generating electricity individually by fuel or diesel-powered generator. So it was not arbitrary. It was scientifically and systematically arrived at. And we're saying that the past sector has stagnated for a long time. We must move forward. And once we want to move forward, let us start with a segment. And it's a stepwise transformation of the sector. All the other bands are likely to have eventually, but they're starting with bands. Once we are able to enhance or augment or upgrade the infrastructure that is necessary to provide them stable electricity. So there will be value for money. We cannot charge anybody a higher tariff if you cannot enjoy stable electricity that will make you remove your generator, that will make you not to spend money on petrol or diesel or even servicing the generator. So people will be better off at the end of the day, the average cost will be much lower to every individual. Okay. But the promise and the pledge that we are making is that we will not increase any, subsidy, any, any tariff when we are not sure of improvement in power supply. Okay. That is what we are saying. So which is why I said, oh, it's going to be more like a migration. It's a journey. Okay. And we must start from Let's somewhere. Let's get a few questions. So Nigerians please. should um, trust us. Oh. You didn't mean to hurt anybody. Honorable Minister, Thank you. I, I am, I've heard you. I am, I am not a fan, per se, because I felt that the power sector needs a whole lot more attention than I believe it's getting. And I'm sure you would admit that um, you, maybe it's an unfortunate thing that when you got into power, we seem to, all the problems now... Of course. He just, he, he, he just, everything just came up just when you mm. came in. Because I live in the band A zone. 
And I'll say that we've experienced worse power supply in the past few months. Yes. So if I have experienced a constant deterioration of my power supply, I've had, we've had grid shuts down yes. back to back. To back. back. Yes. And it affects everybody. And we've had that. We, we used to, uh, truthfully, we used to have 24 hours, even 48. We were having days of no power outage. And we were told then that we were paying a cost reflective cost. Mm -hmm. So I'm surprised now that suddenly the, the true actual cost reflective um, um, is now 200 and something as 65. opposed to what we were paying before. 63. Yeah, we were paying 69. Well, 69. 69. We're, uh, we're, we're paying 63, six, yes. Yes, mm -hmm. 69. So, so some locations have different yes. rates. They have different augmentations to the rates as well. But I don't want to talk much about Band A because Band A is, like you said, a 15%. Yeah. Let's talk about the remaining 85%. The remaining 85% that they do not, they contribute money to buy transformer and they don't still have light. And they are the majority. Mm -hmm. And they are still experiencing power grid collapse. And it seems like you are not, you don't have any, you're not know, looking at them. No, oh. no, 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 no. That's a misconception. We're looking at every Nigerian. We're looking at every electricity consumer. Let me first address what you said about uh, all the problems summing up and uh, crystallizing in the last two, two months. Eh? The problem in the power sector is an accumulated, accumulated problem mm. over the years, more than 50 years, since the days of uh, ECN to NEPA. ECN is the electricity company of Nigeria in the 60s to Nigeria Electric Power Authority, NEPA, to PHCM Power Holding Company of Nigeria, before it was unbundled, and we had the generating companies, the transmission company, and the distribution companies. If certain steps had been taken in the past, probably would not be at the state. What we are witnessing today is the consequence or a reflection of the actions and inactions of past administration. But we're not complaining. We are taking over both the liability and the asset, and we must find a way out of this. We have never enjoyed stable electricity. Everybody knows I'm also in Nigeria. I live here. And I've lived there all my life. But what happened in the last two months? It's also the issue of subsidy. All the subsidies that we have been enjoying since like yes, then... Sir. How does, the, how, how does the government pay subsidy on power? Because I'm going to explain yeah, that. Yeah. The subsidies that we have been enjoying, they have not been fully funded by governments. So they have been accumulating as a debt okay. to the generating companies, to transition companies. And the companies have continued to produce and generate and transmit. Let me, let Even, me pause. I'm, I'm coming, let me just land on this, okay. despite the huge debt. Mm. But in February, they came up and said, government, you are owing us 1.3 trillion for generation. The gas companies are saying, you are owing us $1.3 billion for supplying gas. You must start paying us now, mm. except unless we will not produce again. Mm. And production or generation went down from 4,500 megawatts down to 3,000 megawatts. Mm. That was why you noticed that okay. nationwide so blackout in February. Mm. It was deliberate. Mm. The people refused. So it took me so much effort and energy to go around still appealing to them that government has them in mind okay. that we'll start paying down now. That is what costs. So this is why I wanted you to pause, because yes. I wonder what, what, what Okwe asked. Many Nigerians have that issue. They are not clear. So let me try to illustrate it. Mm -hmm. This is the Nigerian consumer. Mm -hmm. yes. What we are paying is not cost reflective. It's not. Mm -hmm. We are not paying the true value, value. of the tariff which we're paying. Yes. Government is saying, because I know you cannot afford it. You cannot afford it. Mm. I will pay subsidy mm. to the gen Genco. This is the Genco's. Mm. They are the ones generating. Yes. And this is a cost for their own generation. So, for example, generation is saying, okay, for me to produce for you, mm. this is going to be 1,000 Naira. Yes. But I can't, you can't afford 1,000 Naira. Mm. You can only pay 100 Naira. Mm. Me as government, I'll pay 900. Mm -hmm. That 900, they've been owing Genco's. They, they are not paying Genco's. Genco's now saying, this 900, you're not paying me. I'll be producing, you no. Know. Yes. But now that, after I was saying, I'm not producing. No, this is a new administration. Pay us. Let us. Pay us. So that's the issue. That, that's the subsidy part. Let us compel them to start payment. Okay, so we are clear. Okay. So we are clear on Thank that one. Okay. Because the past administration was outgoing. Mm. Okay. We didn't have much to squeeze out of them. Okay. But this is a renewed okay. agenda administration. Okay. They are saying, oh, let us pull our weights. 
for them to know that we are important mm. so that they can start paying down on the debt. You have illustrated the Okay, so now let me properly. just add, because I like, I like Amaka and Rama to come in here. Yes. Just so that we are clear, because I like, yes. one, one, what I like about this show is that we break it down for Nigerians to understand. Yes. So what you are now saying, this 900 that I'm owing you, how do I find this money? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You Banana Island people, you Brand A people, mm -hmm. right? You can afford pay some of it because I'm owing them X trillion. Does it go into that's, that? That's place? even going, so, going forward. Uh -huh. That one is a legacy debt now. Oh, the so the money you're collecting from us is not, not to offset it is legacy. Not to, it's not to upset What is the money it? for? What is this extra money that you're going to, to collect? to ensure that we don't add more to the existing debt. Yes, okay. Because production is ongoing. Okay. ongoing. Let me, okay. Just in one minute. You have just said it. You have hit the point now. Cost reflective, for sake of argument, is mm. 120 naira. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ordinarily, mm. if people are allowed to pay 120 naira sincerely, mm. there will be sustainability and continuity of this sector. Mm. Nobody will shout. Mm. Because out of the 120, the value chain is three segments generation, transmission, and distribution. The cost to the Genkos, the capital investment, operation maintenance cost, staff cost, 60 naira. There's a transmission company. Which is the owner of the national grid yeah. that undertakes the long time, long distance transportation of power from the point of production to the point of distribution? That is TCN. Their own cost is 10 naira. Mm. The distribution companies that we have across Nigeria that takes power to the doorstep of household, businesses, and industries, their own is 15 naira. Mm. So total is 120 mm. that you should pay as a consumer. Mm. The distributors, the discos, are the closest to the people. Mm. So they are the ones that collect everybody. of everybody. What they collect 120, they will remove 50 naira at source, they will give transmission. 70 to embed, that is the middleman. Mm -hmm. 10 naira from it will go to transmission, mm -hmm. 60 will go to generation. Mm -hmm. The government said, no, mm -hmm. I want my people to enjoy cheap electricity. Okay. Don't pay 120 naira. Mm -hmm. Pay 60 naira. That is 50% subsidy. Mm -hmm. And I will add 60 naira. When did this start? It has started since. Mm -hmm. I'm coming it to that. Yeah, it was not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have transparency now. Mm -hmm. Power sector has always been run like a cult. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows. Which is why I said mm -hmm. this our uh, discourse has led to national awareness. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying now, 16 are collected from mm -hmm. the consumer mm -hmm. to the disco. Disco, of course, they will deduct their own full yes. 50 naira. Okay. Yes. And there's 10 naira left. The 10 naira left. You give it to Embed. Government, uh, give it to Embed. Embed will ask government, give me 60 naira to augment this yeah. so that I can settle the other two operators. Government said, I don't, I don't, have, have, I don't have money. Okay. Okay, they will only okay. distribute 10 naira between the two of them, which is that remaining 60 naira has now it's accumulated, accumulated over, over time. time. Right, that sir. is it. Okay. Okay. We have let me okay. go ahead, Ramat. Okay, okay sir, since we have established the fact that, okay, this is the amount and all of that that is going to be this, what have you done in respect to making sure that all of us are all metered? That's the band A. Thank you very much. Band B. Band A. Band Every all, all the products. 12 million customers. Okay. Consumers. Mm -hmm. we, we, let me tell you, like I told because you. you can't be giving us estimated Historically, bills. I'm coming. Nobody likes estimated billing. Mm -hmm. When you have estimated billing, Someone is cheating mm -hmm. someone. someone. Either the discos are cheating the customers, or the customers are cheating the disco, or the staff of the discos are cheating both the customers, and so it is not uh, acceptable. Currently, we have over 12 million electricity consumers. The mid train penetration is just a little over 5 million. We have close to 8 million meter gap, which means that households, businesses, institutions, industries that are not metered, mm. there are 8 million. Mm -hmm. There have been a lot of metering, mass metering initiatives in the past. Mm. As later metering initiatives in the past, I will tell you too, CBN started one. They started from phase zero, which they completed, 1 million meters. Mm -hmm. I think about 950 was installed. Mm -hmm. But there were lots of discrepancies noted in that phase zero of the mass metering program, as it being refused to move to phase one. We had a World Bank intervention mm. to meter 1,250,000 households and businesses. They started it. There were issues, litigations. The Association of Meter Manufacturing of Nigeria, it took them to court. that They cannot make it all imported. They must patronize them. That one also took a while. Not until I got to the office that I resolved 
this issue. And they now said, okay, let's go ahead. That one is still on. Now, Mr. President said, we cannot be doing all these uh, petty, petty initiatives. Let's do a big bang so that we can harmonize all the initiatives under one umbrella. And he created what we called Presidential Metering Initiative, the PMI. And he appointed the council. And by privilege, he made me the chairman of this council. Okay. Well, the target he has given us is that Nigerians, in the next five years, nobody should have estimated billion again. Mm -hmm. Because metering is also expensive. What he has done is minimum of two million meters installation on a yearly basis over the next four to five years. That's about 10 million meters to be brought, to, 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 to be installed in people's homes. And he's given us a seed capital of about 100 billion. And we need about 400 to 500 billion in an annual basis to achieve this. You can see that it's a huge fund that is required. Seed capital, 100 billion. We're going to have debt capital of another 400 billion. Mm -hmm. And we are already having support and assistance from NSI, that's the Nigerian uh, Sovereign Investment Authority, okay. to give that loan. And this thing will be paid back over a long time. So I can assure you that Mr. President is first addressing the issue of metering. And we are going to get there, inshallah. Okay. Which is why okay. I always like us to see power project as a journey. Because it takes a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. What you need to do is to begin that journey. Mm -hmm. And you'll be making progress on a yearly basis. When you are doing repairs, mm -hmm. even the road, I made an example of Lagos by the Expressway. It was being repaired, renovated and upgraded for almost 12 years. During that repair, there were pains, even more pains than the usual. Okay, but when we finished, from the, we, we, so we started we, enjoying. So, so we must bear this of, a bit. For, for concerning the issue of meeting, I'll come to you, Amaka. Mm. Because Nigerians are saying that, okay, for those of us that are in the interim, yes. pain estimated, can government do something to reduce the burden? Because sometimes these estimated billions are um, way past estimated. But let me tell you, there's already um, a regulation on okay. estimated billion. Mm. There's a cap. Okay. There's a maximum mm. you can charge a customer. Exactly. Do people know yes. that? Yes. Let me tell you, just a month ago, yeah. there were penalties and there were refunds made to customers oh. in billions of naira. Mm, wow. really? For those, this, yeah, billions. Of things like no, no, it was out in the papers. But it's even like For those that we felt them. they overcharged the customers, mm. they did a bit. NERC, the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, said re refund billions. I can, I'm sure of that. I signed I up. I did not get any refund. Wow. We yeah. not so, get any refund. And this is going to be continuous. Mm -hmm. We are going to be very, very, very strict okay. with the management of the discourse now. Okay. 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 We are going to be very strict. So, there will be sanctions mm -hmm. for non-compliance. Any disco that is indicted, you can see that even in this recent review of tariff upward, mm -hmm. Abuja disco has been charged, penalized 200 million. You understand? For actually uh, uh, putting together some communities mm -hmm. as band A when they are not enjoying band A service. Mm -hmm. This will be because. The Electricity Act of 2023 has allowed us to do this. In the past, the PSRA, the Power Sector Reform Act, did not allow us with punitive sanctions. Yeah. 10,000 naira per day for a disco that is airing, that is being indicted. 10,000 naira per day for 30 days is just 300,000. For one year, it's 3.6 million. If any disco committed any offense, they'll just write a check of 3.6 million to neck, and that is the end. But now, there is no limit to such penalties and sanctions. Before, the NEC was not given the power to remove the border management of discourse when they err or they commit an offense. Now but now, the EA 2023 has amended that. Them. So we have the power to do all this. But why we have not been seeing a lot of this is we came, I came into the office about seven, eight months ago. The first three, four months, you have to be on top of what you are doing. You must investigate the issues, establish genuine issues with this industry. Then list out or document workable solutions mm. that you start implementing. Right, so after ahead. six months, we will now start implementing. So you can see that we have hit the ground running yeah. and we will okay. not stop. Still <laughs> answering to Nigerian women. Amaka, go ahead, please. Okay, so, um, Honorable Minister, in fairness to you, on one part to 
and hey, I understand that energy sense is common sense, right? Yes. And I was brought up to um, turn off a, a room or power source. Well, when I leave a room, I should turn that off if it's not in use, but not refrigerator. Mm -hmm. And I explained to us that it was a joke, yes. like, not, not intended the way, you know. So, and then I'm also happy you, you mentioned the Electricity Act. So let me come down to that. For example, Section 116 of the Act mm -hmm. provides that as in, was, it was then the first, first place to prevent abuse of, of um, market power. Do you think your office has adhered strictly to the provisions oh, of sir. Section 116 of the Act in terms of um, notifications? Yes. yes. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. We did this, and I can confirm to you authoritatively. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, the, D, the EA Act, that's the Act of 2023, signed in June 2023 by our principal president Bola Ahmed Tinubu mm -hmm. is quite comprehensive and elaborate and it has corrected all the errors of the past or previous legislations. Number one, it allows the National Electricity Regulatory Commission mm -hmm. to undertake tariff review, mm -hmm. minor review every six months because tariff building block is made up of a lot of variable parameters. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are FX Mm. based. Mm. Mm. A lot of them are inflation based. Mm. So as prices of equipment and appliances are running the power operators are going up. Mm. Supposed to reflect in the tariff. Mm. Over six months maybe minor review because of the shortness of the period. But after every two years they are allowed to make major review to the tariff. The last review was done in 2022. Since 2022 we have seen escalation in price of goods and services, exchange rates, the transformers, the power cables, the power lines, and all that. Even the transmission towers. We are saying, okay, we have to do this review. And we have been contemplating this months back. What the section required us to do was to make wide consultation mm -hmm. and notification to the people that would bear this tariff. I can tell you, NAC, they started these consultations long ago. Mm. You can confirm from the discos, even from the electricity consumers at the various locations. They did regional consultations, workshops, and seminars to sensitize people about the effect of liquidity squeeze in the sector and why tariff must be reviewed. They did that. Now, when I resumed, if you have been following my programs, I've always been hammering on the fact that the major issue, which other past administration have side away, from discussing mm. in this industry, there are two. Liquidity squeeze, mm. lack of liquidity, necessary for continuity and sustainability, then infrastructural deficits, which you must fix. And I said, the only way out of this is for us to review the tariff. I've been saying it. And I consulted almost all the stakeholders in the sector, the Jenkos, the transmission company, the discos, uh, the co some customers, some consumers. And this culminated into a retreat that we had in December, December 14 to 16, at Transcorp Hilton, where we called ourselves to a three-day retreat to tre discuss all this. And the major issue discussed was about the tariff review. So we did the wide consultation required. So we will not do, do, we will not do anything that is outside of the law, that is illegal. President Bolamet you know, will not even allow us to do that. Right. So I can say that we complied with the section that you raised. Let me Thank ask us, go back a bit to the issue of subsidy, because our, 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 I looked at a report that um, by human rights lawyer, Mr. Femi Falano, said back in 2022 that the Buhari administration has stopped paying subsidy mm -hmm. in power. Yes. And this is part of the thing that leads to people's l lack of belief in the system. One second, you've stopped paying subsidy. The next second, you're saying that we are owing Jenkos and mm. transfer. You're wondering what is going on. There's, there's a lack of transparency. Mm -hmm. So help us clarify. Because you're saying that there's money to be owed. He's saying that government stopped paying subsidy back in 2022. Two things which I will clarify. Payment of subsidy is different from removal of subsidy. Mm. Sincerely, mm. government has not been paying subsidy. I'm confirming that to you. If they had been paying subsidy, we would not have the historical debt that we have in the industry. It does not mean that they removed subsidy. If the last review of tariff, let's even say that, okay, as of 2022, it was close to cost-reflective tariff, where it was 69 for band A, about 54 for band B, down to 40-something for band E. Let's say it was close to. But between that 2022 and 2024, like I said earlier, we have seen movement in prices. 
We have seen exchange rate escalations. You understand? So which means, and we have not reviewed the tariff, which means that the cost of producing or generating and transmitting and distributing power has ballooned. The customers have not been made to pay. So the subsidy was there, but it was not being paid, which is why I said governments find it difficult to fund or to pay subsidy. In 2022, subsidy was 260 million. You understand? Mm. In 2023, subsidy was 720, I mean, I mean billion, 220, 260 billion, 2022. 2023, it was 720 billion, out of which only 400 was funded. There was a 320 billion that was brought forward because things were increasing then. In 2023, if we must retain the tariff at the current level, mm. government requires 2.9 trillion as subsidy. We are saying this is too much. Let us see how we can actually bring it down. And I mean, my gratitude to the president is to this grant. He said, Bio, we cannot remove subsidy 100%. I was voted in to remove the sufferings of Nigeria, to alleviate their predicaments. I should not be adding to this. We've done enough in the two of harmonizing exchange rates and the other one of removing subsidy okay. from well. So whatever we can do to meet them, middle ground, for those that can afford it, mm. you understand? Let us do it. I said, I'm not, I'm not approving. Uh, because you see right our pocket. A is feeling like. You see our pocket and you know we can afford exactly. it. We are not punishing. Yes, to punish you. Check no, no, no. account. The, I said, 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 let me tell you what this, they are getting the power supply. I get they are getting it. it if they are getting it, okay. because they are better off. Okay. We you do understand? have a bigger problem. You know, we've discussed the challenge because um, obviously we've discussed the challenge of the, the subsidy. Now Nigerians know that government has been subsidizing power, so, uh, power, power for them for many years, yes. and it has it wasn't paid under the last administration, mm. which is why there is a pile up. Yes. We get that. We also understand the fact that the, what we are paying now, what you are asking Band A to pay, is it cost reflective? It is. It is cost reflective. So we we're not subsidizing Band A for okay. now. Okay. And again, the building blocks contain a lot of variable parameters. Mm -hmm. The exchange rate is there. Yeah. Now that we have seen mm -hmm. that one trending, would that affect it will affect it. It, it. Will it. it will right. affect it. Now, That's for it. generating, yes. the entire generation of Nigeria, mm. pata pata bring together, is not enough to solve the problem of Lagos State's need. You know. And it seems like we are not even talking ah. enough about hey. the need to increase mm -hmm. generation. Yeah. Uh, can you please... Even what is being generated, yes. we're not even consuming we're not, it. We're not, no, because there are even, there's even stories that we cannot yes. transmit. No, we so can't They say we don't have capacity for transmission, sir. We've read it Thank in the papers yes. that our transmission is many years old yeah, and the equipments old. are old. Yeah. And I, I, I would blame Nigerians for when Nigerians, it's just as I would blame government for it, because they say even when Nigerians, the government put in new equipment, yeah, Nigerians will go there and go and, and steal, and steal the new equipment. So, you don't need to go Already, we've yabbed ourselves. We've yabbed our so, people. We have called ourselves yeah. out. Okay. We but you, we are calling out oh. the government on generation and transmission. That's how right. are you holding generator uh, Genco's account, um, accountable to increase their capacity? And how are we ensuring that transmission is able to carry what we say they should transmit Thanks. to? Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Like I told you, I told you, I'm an accountant. So when it comes to businesses, I know a lot of things that are supposed to be in place for that business to be able to run seamlessly mm. you understand the generation that we have today we have majorly two forms the hydropower electric mm -hmm. generation where we have That's kanji we have jeba we have shiroro we have gurara kashingila dadinkua mm. and the uh, uh, um, the other one that we are just about to, that's zungeru mm -hmm. we just completed mm. it supplied about 25 percent of our total mm. power installed the gas powered plants that they call Tama plants. Mm. The Egwins of this world, Olonshogu, Omotocho, Iwobo, Afam, Ugeli, Giregu, and others, mm. is about 75% mm. of our generation. Okay. You understand? Hydro requires water, which is it's cheaper. It's which cheaper. is available. Yeah. You understand? Even during the dry season, mm. the water level goes down, down. nature comes down, but that's for a short period. Mm. The Tama plant, they require gas. Mm as feedstock, more like the raw materials for them to produce, mm -hmm. this gas is also not cheap. Mm -hmm. You understand? Which is why when government mm -hmm. has not been paying them, 
it's been difficult for them to, to pay the gas suppliers. Mm, yeah. And the gas pipeline infrastructure too is also defective. Mm, you see vandalized. pipeline vandalization, the pressure not being enough, no compressor, no booster here and there. The installed capacity totally in Nigeria today for the national grid, mm. because we have other embedded plants that are within a state or within and some captive within a particular company. Mm. For the national grid, total install capacity today, hydro plus gas, is over 13,000 megawatts. Mm. But the highest we have ever generated was 5,800 megawatts, specifically in March 2021. And the national grid was able to wheel 5,800 mm. to our people. Yes. Okay. But the issue is demand. Yeah. In as much as our power requirement is huge, we generate a lot of power in Nigeria, over 50,000 megawatts. A lot of them are generated in houses and companies using generator, fuel, and diesel. Mm. But the national grid, where the discos get this power and they supply it to all the feeders, there are some feeders that distribute to households to be able to collect their money. Mm. But a lot of the feeders, you understand, to the lower band customers, when they distribute, they won't be able to collect the money. And there's also a lot of power theft. So this school started rejecting power. Yeah, we read that. To those feeders, you understand? So the demand became so low. So that even generating companies cannot even produce based on their capacity mm. from, because of lack, lack of stimulation of demand. That's what we are trying to do now, to stimulate demand first, then ramp up generation. That's number one. Number two is inadequacy of gas supply not only in quantity, but also in quality because of the vandalized pipelines, the lack of compressors, lack of boosters. Before power gets from the Niger Delta, before it gets to a motor shop power plant in, the, in uh, Ore, the quality is poor and the pressure is low. Before talking about getting to a launch of power plant in Pakpalanto, in fact, no, no, no quality. Which is why you see a lot of these generating plants. Eh? They will have six turbines. For example, I have visited all these locations. Because if I start telling you what and what we have done, well, in, well I mean, since I got to the office, we will not leave this place today. But to Nigerians, sorry, just one minute. Okay. To Nigerians, once they cannot stand up and switch on the light and the light you comes have not done You have not done anything. No, 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 which is why distribution is very important to us. Whatever we're doing in generation or in uh, um, transmission, if it's not translating into distribution, we have not done. So we are doing so much. And these are the underground issues that we need to resolve. So those are the issues with the generating companies. And the target that we have today is, once we have seen the demand coming back up, mm. I promise Nigerians that within the next six months, we are going to ramp up our generation to minimum of 6,000 to start with. Okay. And every six months, we'll be ramping it up. Okay, sir. And our transmission grid yeah. has the capacity. Mm. If it could wheel 5,800 as far as March 2021, three years ago, with all the investment mm. in enhancement and upgrade on infrastructure in transmission, it will wheel over 6,000. And TCN management is telling me that they are sure of 8,100 capacity mm. for this. And there are also projects we are doing to make sure that we upgrade the capacity of the transmission infrastructure. Okay, me, I am bothered because I know yes. I'm going to be on the band A. You are, yeah. obviously. So, <laughs> so, the band aid, so how are you ensuring that most of the meters are not going to be bypassed? Yeah. Yes. To make sure that oh, I get what, you what I, what I pay for. Ask. The reason why I'm asking this question is this, is because, okay, for example, some people who stay in rented apartments mm. in those band A, whatever, these meters that I give you, is it, our, is, it for, is it our personal meters? Is it for us? So that, such that when we are moving to another house, are we going <laughs> to move with our meter, because if I move to another house and maybe that person bypassed his meter, so I'll you go there now and so let, me, let me attach, let me attach my question to her question, yes. because my question is similar to hers, yeah. in the sense that, so there are people who are having um, power theft, there are people who are, who are bypassing, who are stealing power. Are stealing power. Yes. Now those guys, I mean, it seems like when you, when you make band A pay for this 225, you're making us pay for the inefficiencies of discos to catch 
or to regulate those people who are involved in power theft. You are yes. stealing power. That's, that's, yeah. They're not paying. Yeah. There's no money. Mm -hmm. So the reason why you're not getting money is because you're not we, you're we making, making sure. The ones that we can collect so from. those people who are always paying, people like Ramat mm -hmm. and Topway who are always paying, you're not to collect more money from them because they're the ones we that are up for the ones that are those ones. So is that fair on us? Okay, exactly. And let me no, no, how no, you're no, ensuring this will be used as so how do you now so what's the disciplinary action against the discos now for not doing their job? Because if they don't do their job, you don't get back on the consumers. Right. To, so to, to add a part C to that question, <laughs> sorry, yeah. because I heard you yesterday saying that even the discos yes. were not technically ready or financially ready, ready for yes. this job. Yes. They didn't have the capacity to even do the job that they are doing. So what are you also doing to ensure to make them do the do right, right thing, thing so that we don't have to Not suffer for it? Yes. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. There are so mm -hmm. many questions wrapped up in one. Yes. one, one <laughs> but I can assure you I will take it one after the okay. other without wasting time. Number one, let me say that the tariff fixing is based on identified as stated parameters. Okay. You cannot pay for the power theft mm. being committed by another customer. It's not possible. There is transparency of no. There is transparency in the competition of tariff, mm -hmm. and the parameters are well stated. The capital investment of the generating companies, their operations and maintenance, the adjustment for exchange rate, gas cost, inflation rate, and a lot of things. It is stated, and you cannot slot in anything. Okay. That is neck for you. So number one. Number two, the which is why I said the problem in the power sector is so much and huge mm -hmm. and it has accumulated over time. And I'm happy that you're also on top of what these issues are, which make my job easy. The power theft of bypassing of meter is prevalent in our society. Even there are some affluent individuals, when they are starting their construction. It's right from the foundation that they ask the contractors to remove something to remove some things and not connected to the meter. And they were also part of people that will be complaining that they are not having stable power. You can see yeah. that we are actually the ones that we are the architect of our own mis misfortunes. And we'll correct it. That's what we call now, which is why you will not see the disclose asking to go and buy your meter if you don't have meter. Because there must be standardization mm. and compliance to some certain technical standards. But above all, there's what we call meter data management system, MDMS. So when we are implementing this, our mass meter acquisition program, every disco must have an MDMS so that remotely from their office, they can monitor activities on your meter. When you bypass, it will alert them. If they want to switch you down, they can switch you off from their office. Is that the reason they are asking everybody to get the new meters, right? Yeah, now? the smart meters. Mm, okay. The smart meters can do all this. When we are able to do all this, bypassing will not be possible. Tampering with meters will not be possible. Mm. Because there is what we call NEMSA, the Nigeria Electricity Management Service Agency, which are the chief inspector, the mm. inspector of the industry. They must certify every meter now and ensure that every meter comply with the technical standard as specified. So I'm saying that all those problems of the past, we have put them in like a, a pool if you have or a bucket. So, and we are picking them one after the other to be resolved. And you trust me, problem of 50 years, mm -hmm. over 50 years, will not be resolved in one year. But, we've had but we must be making progress. Mm. I'm the 47th power minister in Nigeria yeah, today. We interviewed the 46th. The now. 46th. Mm. Or they, not, they were brilliant people, mm. patriotic, smart people, ready to write their names in gold, ready to make a difference. But there's a way the sector mm. has disenabled them mm. to perform the way they wanted to perform. Mm. But the president said, what happened to your predecessors will not happen to you. Just have the boldness, the courage to do the right thing. So far, you are fair on Nigerians. And that's what we are doing. And we are ready to make a difference. And I will make the difference. But we should... Trust the judgment of Mr. President. Okay. He puts me there because he believes I can handle it. And I'm assuring you that I've never failed my past uh, responsibilities in the past. Uh, so I will not will fail. Yeah. Let yeah. me let Amaka yeah. jump yeah. in. Yeah. I will make a difference. Yeah. I'm promising okay. Nigeria. Because you talked you talk yes. about the certifi uh, certification of the, of of the, the meters, meters and yes. that is the board. I hope it's not like the Nigerian thing where uh, people are supposed to do a job and then they just they, they take their time. What is the time frame in which if you submit, you buy a meter, you, submit to, um, you pay for a meter, what's the time frame from when you do timeline. that to when you, the timeline? So it's, yeah. it's not frustrating. So it's not frustrating yeah, because I understand you already you. know Nigeria. I understand you. Yeah. You know, 
this is new Nigeria, mm -hmm. and we are all working at it. It's my job, it's your job, it's everybody's responsibility. Exactly. When you see something, say something. Mm -hmm. You cannot guarantee people 100% that they will comply with the new, the new sheriff in town. They, will, they are there to also mm -hmm. sabotage what you are doing. I told you, there are cabals, there are cartels, and there are orcs in this sector too that will not make this sector work. You understand? Because of their own selfish interest. They were saying, no, it won't be possible. When you see such, please do not hesitate to escalate. And we will attend to it. We are putting the structures, the systems, and the institutions in place to ensure a long-term sustainability of this sector. So it won't be a flash in the pan. We are addressing the root cause of all these issues, not just addressing the symptoms. That is why it will not, you won't say it immediately. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, before one, two years, you will start singing People our People are asking them to, to fire you because they said, ah, this guy, he's an accountant. Why uh -huh. do you make him a power minister? What yes. do you know? Mm -hmm. They're saying hashtag, the power minister must go. Uh -huh. I have somebody here say all this English she's speaking. They have a comment here. Uh -huh. She's from money. She says, we don't understand all this grammar. Oh. The ministry <laughs> cannot boast of anything it has achieved so far since his administration started. How long does it take to implement all this English? Mm -hmm. I have so a, to the average Nigerian, yeah, there's, like, a, there's a lot but, going on. But, so, but, but I have comments on the That's the patience. Too. Yes. Okay. I, have, I have several comments on the contrary. Adnam says, I'm convinced Tokwe is doing a good job. People should pay for their bills and stop stealing power. Mm -hmm. Somebody, as in, I have several YouTube comments are convinced based on okay. what you're saying that okay. you're convinced. But so I have a question. Okay. So we have both sides. Sincerely, it's not a popularity contest. <laughs> we <laughs> just, we just want power. Sincerely. Exactly. It's to do the job. It doesn't I, matter I, what people say. Yes. yes. The yes, end done. will justify the means, I can okay. tell you. Right. These are temporary comments. By the time we are able to see six months we're holding you said six thousand six thousand yeah, yeah, yeah. we're holding what, what month are we in now in april april april, 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 april for the end of june this year. july for the end of the year october october, 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 october like, we'll call you october, back we will have six thousand october generated you are yeah, said here yeah, yeah, i'm coming here yeah, anytime go ahead okay your question please yes honorable minister thank you um i know that you are aware of what is happening the disruption between nessie by the eco electric distribution company you know yes. we've read damning reports mm -hmm. emails establishing acts of fraud you know this and all that. workers mm -hmm. you know so what exactly is happening with the eco distribution company and what is your office doing yeah. what's the what's your office going to do mitigate. With, to mitigate this crime that we have seen crime. how are allegation you allegation yeah. allegation allegation thank you crime. for correcting that mm -hmm. allegations of crime right. sir. allegation backed with evidence is crime yes. Yes. at this point you know an accused the suspect is not deemed guilty until oh, he's proved. Is. Thank you very much. Let me tell you, it's all about regulation. Just like you have in banks. Mm -hmm. When you're having board issues in a commercial bank, mm -hmm. or any bank for that matter, the CBN is the regulator. Mm -hmm. To start with, you should not meddle in the internal operations, internal wranglings of, of a private company. Right. Mm -hmm. Not until you start seeing that this thing is going to degenerate mm -hmm. into a level that will affect the customers mm -hmm. that are supposed to be serving. Mm -hmm. We are on top of the issues that they are having in Eco Disco. I've spoken to the chairman several times. I've spoken to the other director several times. And I've spoken to even the MD, Tino Adesonda, several times. What I've done, let me tell you, the way, well, people need to understand the job of the minister very well too. The minister is the last result. Mm -hmm. I provide oversight. The oversight for the industry. You have the operators. I don't own a generating company. Mm. I don't own a transmission company. I don't own a distribution company. So my, my job is medium to long term mm. to ensure that I expedite national development mm. through formulation of the appropriate policies and establishment of appropriate structures, systems, and institutions to provide the conducive atmosphere for the operators to run and guarantee long-term sustainability of the power sector so that we'll be able to provide stable, uh, functional, reliable, and cost-effective electricity to households, businesses, and industries. Between the operators and me as the minister, there's also the regulator mm. who directly regulate their daily operations. Okay. What I've done was to call the chairman regulator. of mm. the regulator. Right. More minutes, intervene. Mm. He has held meeting with them. Mm. Okay. Let us see how far. That's Your field marshal don't go to war with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If the regulators cannot resolve it, then it comes to me, okay. and I will meet yeah. with everybody. I will wield 
The bills. No, we have very little time, so we have to squeeze as many questions as possible. We have to protect the consumers. Okay. Consumer protection is one of my major issues, my major responsibility to ensure that customers are not unduly. I need Charged. to ask you about Siemens. Thank you. We're just hearing Siemens here, yes, Siemens exactly. there. They're in the country. Okay. They're doing this. They have okay. the. Are they coming to collect our jobs? Are they bringing transformers? Are they taking okay. transformers? We just been hearing Siemens. Ah, but we don't know what are they, what are they doing. Gang, 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 gang in Nigeria. Uh, what yes. is their work? Give Thank it you. Us. Thank you very much. You know the the Siemens project. Just give me two three minutes to explain this. Okay. If you also listen to our last press conference, I gave some detailed explanation about Siemens. Siemens project started 2018 okay. under the Buhari's administration. Mm. And what did they say? Oh, they went to Egypt mm. and they saw what Siemens mm. did together with SWD. About 8,000 or 13,000 megawatts mm. they were able to produce, able to transmit and distribute mm. within a period of, say, five years. Mm. And they said, ah, this is what we want. Let it be a turnkey. Give it Siemens. Okay. Let them work on our transmission mm. and distribution segment. Mm. We have the generation, you understand, mm. to make sure that it is taken up to the level that they witnessed in Egypt. Okay. And they appointed the project champion, mm. who happened to be the chief of staff then, mm. late Abakiari of blessed memory, mm. to champion this. And they started, you understand. Mm. They agreed on a government to government agreement that the German government, through their export credit agency, will give Nigeria a $2.3 billion loan okay. to fund these projects. Right. And they will appoint their own company, which is Siemens, mm. to oversee the project. That was the idea. The process of signing, of looking at the agreement of everything, of course, it took time, 2018 to 2020. Mm. 2020, yes. that was COVID. Okay. Mm. You understand? It slowed it down. And unfortunately, it was during this COVID that the project champion died. He passed. Okay. It passed. You understand? 2021, we started transition. Mm. Elections, the new government coming. So there was no traction okay. during that period. Okay. You understand? Mm. And the project was supposed to be in phases. There's what they call the pilot phase that will serve as a proof of concept mm. to see that is this project going to solve our problem? Once we are satisfied with the pilot, we'll go to phase one, we'll go to phase two. When the government of Ashwaju, mm. Ahmed Bolatinubu, came in, he said, ah, let's look at this project. How is it going? You know, a, a project that you are not part of the initiation, mm -hmm. you need to review, you need that to review how, how, how it has fared over time before you now decide whether to move on or to okay. cut it. Mm -hmm. There has not been any financial commitment of everybody, anybody. Wow. You can easily say that we don't want or we want. But when we looked at it, mm -hmm. the German Chancellor came to Abuja. He met with the president. Mm -hmm. I was there. I will discuss. So, ah, there is some sense in continuing with this project. So, let's look at it. We also went to meet them at the African Business Summit in, in Berlin, in Germany. We sat down again with the Chancellor of Germany you know, and their own finance minister, and sorry, energy minister and the finance minister. We looked at it and we agreed that no, this is a good project. Germany was still committed. Nigeria was ready to continue. We said, okay, we now have to sign an acceleration agreement that will make sure that we kickstart the project again okay. to be able to achieve the knowledgeable objectives that they had from the beginning. Okay. And we agree, okay, that was in October, November. Let's meet in Dubai at COP28. And you see that the pres our president was there, the German, German chancellor was there, Siemens was there, and our own SPV, that's the special purpose, purpose vehicle created for it, FGM Power Company, was there. And the acceleration agreement was signed. Okay. And they agree that they are going to continue. We agree that we are going to continue. Since then, what has happened? We started the pilot phase. This December till date, we are almost concluding the pilot phase. The pilot phase involves importation of 10 big power transformers. Okay. And importation of 10 power mobile substations. Okay. For us to fix in various locations across the country. Okay. For the power transformers, the 10 have arrived. Okay. We have installed and commissioned five. Okay. I was in Kogi, I was in Jeba, okay. I was in uh, Iwobo in Bini, I was in uh, Abuja, and one place in Kano to install and commission all this. Okay. And ask them, it has boosted mm. the capacity of transmission. Mm. The remaining five 
they are installing them. And supporting the transmission. Transmission. Yeah. So, 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 so I'm, I'm coming in the next two weeks, mm. as, two weeks to one month, I should be able to commission the remaining five. For the mobile substation, that's the very interesting part. Mm. You know what they call a substation? Mm -hmm. Those 330 kV yeah. substation, yeah. where you see all the high voltage power line, yeah. or 132 kV mm. substation. Those are transmission substations mm. that supply power to the distribution company. Mm which is stepped down to 33 kV and 11 kV mm. to be taken to your house at 450 yeah. volts. Yeah. Mm. All those substations take mm. between three and five years mm. to establish. Mm. Yes, but because they have, to, they have to system. manufacture the transformer, mm. they have to fix it, they have to do the lines. Mm. But the mobile substations that we have, mm. if there is a problem in any of those permanent substations, mm. they can before they can now, work. the people may not have light for one year or two years. But now, we can drive it down from the Lagos yard, you know, the Nemsa yard here. Mm. And within one day, drive mm. the substation down to the place, you understand, and do the connection in we two days time. and restore lights. No, and we have, we have ten of that. We have installed three. We are commissioning it next week. Mm. One in Aja, one in Kano, another one mm. in, a, what do you call it, Agbara, the industrial cluster. Mm. We have seven left that we are going to be taking to where they have transmission issues. Mm. That is the Okay. Impact okay. of yeah, very little substations. Time. Let me... We now go to phase one, okay. which is the bigger part that will address mm -hmm. both transmission and uh, distribution. distribution. Okay. We we'll change transformers, we we'll change power lines, we we'll change power power poles. Let me, let, okay. let me throw in one question. Injection substation. We'll okay. Let, let, let me throw in one question for the masses, right? Because the economy is hard and everybody. I you know, I need three hours so, for so, this so kind who, of interview. So, who is so that Nigeria will know who is responsible what we are doing. Replacement of, 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 from the old meter to the smart uh, meter. Mm -hmm. And then what happens to the money that we paid for the old meter? Would there be a subsidy from discos or like what's, go what's going on? Because you people have already have old meter. What's going to encourage them yeah, to move on to the too. smart meter? And, and people don't have meters. And people don't, people don't, even, don't have even have meters at, at all. all. So who have old meters and they're not even, they're still giving them, they just feel like it's not working. You don't want them to move move to smart Let meter. Me so what's going on? Another question. Mm. There, are, I, there is someone and TNE sends this question that there's somebody she knows. Five weeks now, they don't have the transmitter. The transformer went bad. Mm. The company, the discos have told them that there are hotels in that place that should contribute money to buy transformer. And the hotels are saying they don't want to carry that body because they bought the previous one. Please help us address the question concerning changing meters that are already working mm -hmm. for new one when some people don't have. Yes. And who is carrying the cost? And who is carrying the cost for replacing transformers? Some are months without light okay. because of no transformer. Thank you very much. You have much. just two minutes. Look, the issue of meter, let me tell you, mm -hmm. if you have installed meters mm -hmm. recently in the last one to two years, mm -hmm. they are smart meters. Mm -hmm. The only thing they need to do is to configure it mm -hmm. to fit the mm -hmm. Meter data management system with the MDMS. Mm. So you don't need to change your meters. Mm. Except the old, old archaic one. analog mm. meters, okay. which are no longer compliant with the smart meter mm. requirements. That's number one. And when we give out meters, mm. there'll be an arrangement that government will make sure it does not inflict hardship on the consumers. Mm. To ensure that it is paid over time in a way that you don't even feel it. That's the arrangement. Mm. Then the issue of transformers, I have said it several that. Provision of transformer is not the responsibility of the consumers. Mm -hmm. It is the duty of the discos. It's part of their distribution infrastructures, which they are collecting tariff for. Mm -hmm. The cost of transformer is, in, is built inside the tariff. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. And we know that there are some areas that are attracted to some discos, that they, they can abandon them mm -hmm. because they are low-income area. They won't be able to get their money. Mm -hmm. As the minister, I have a budget that is also buoyant enough for government intervention in these areas. So that we will distribute thousands of transformers across Nigeria. I'm promising you that. And I've said it several times. When we start implementing this budget, we'll identify those areas and ensure that government intervene by providing transformers. Even there are some rural areas where we are going to provide alternative source of energy. Mm. The mini grids, the micro grids for the smaller grid businesses, mm. for the rural schools, rural hospitals, mm. even for homes. We have solar home systems too mm. that we can actually give to these people. Mm. You understand? Mm. And even street lights for security. There are solar systems. So mm. our area is doing a lot. In fact, we also plan to bring out a number of our federal institutions, mm. universities, mm and teaching hospitals out of the national grid and give them their own mini grid. And in the next uh, one or two weeks, we are commissioning about eight universities okay. that we are giving 
We have to wrap up. Four mm -hmm. megawatts of power so that they don't have to rely on national grid. The last thing I want to mention here before I leave is the subnational governments mm -hmm. must also rise up. The governors. The governors, the local government chairman, the EA Act has allowed all of them to play in power. You see what happened in Abia State. Yeah. That's a backup power for the states. Mm -hmm. If anything happens to the national grid, they don't have mm. to suffer. Mm -hmm. Every state must have nothing less than 50 megawatts of power. And we are working on that mm. with the uh, solar uh, source of power that we are we working on. We should hold our governors uh, also responsible. responsible. They must be responsible mm. too. Even in managing the discos, because governments still own 40% of the discos. Out of this 40%, state governments own almost 25%. Why are they not getting involved? Oh. They should call them to performance. Exactly. It's not every... I'm in Abuja, one person. You know, we have 36 states to manage. If you have the support of the governors to, sub, to, 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 to assist oh. us, mm -hmm. it's going to be easier for us. You understand? And the private sector, too, are being called upon that. This EA has uh, made everything possible mm -hmm. for everybody to participate in the power sector. Mm -hmm. So, uh, my last appeal to Nigeria is that they should still be patient with us. Okay. They should have the trust and confidence, and with time, will make a significant difference. Thank you very in much. This That's all industry. we can take mm. on the show. Thank you so the much. Pity, sir. There's not much time. Yeah, yeah, come back. Much time. I know I Elijah Lima wanted to be here when mm. she was first she's traveled to the first thing. She, mm. she had plenty of bullets for you. I know. Uh, but she couldn't uh, make you it. You can still contact me after away. the program. We'll bring, uh -huh. like to bring you back. Mm -hmm. yes. so definitely three months. Like, we're giving yeah, six, six months. October. So let's just even start with three, three months. months. Okay. Okay. I, I will come before then. then. Come yeah. 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 Donald Punk can easily talk right. to me. And, uh, <laughs> That's all we can take on Thank today's show. Much. Hope you've enjoyed the show and learned a few things as we have. Have a great weekend. We'll see you with the leader of your view pigeon tomorrow morning. Have a great weekend. See you Monday. Bye bye.